Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about file formats when it comes to image files. Now there are a couple of file formats out there available for when you are saving the images or for when you are taking the images on your camera and I had a couple of questions from a couple of friends that were asking me to clarify a little bit what's the difference between them so I thought instead of sending them a really really long message or writing a blog post that not a lot of people read nowadays I thought I would make a video and I'll try and explain in a couple of words what are the main differences between them and what are the main ones that most people use nowadays. The first one is the most common one that is out there and that most of the people that take pictures know about and that is the JPEG format. Now this format is designed to be slightly small in size so that you will be able to save a lot of images on your memory card and is one of the most common ones. Your phones use it, your camera use it, every single compact camera out there has the JPEG format. Now as technology evolves this JPEG format is giving you the possibility or maybe the camera is giving you the possibility to have a low, medium or high resolution file. Now on some cameras you will find this in the settings as being a JPEG fine format so the fine one would be the highest resolution possible. Uh, that will ensure that you will have a lot more information about the image itself uh, and you'll have an image that is slightly bigger in size. Now the JPEG files are usually used for social media or for printing um, when there is no need for editing. So if you know that you're not going to edit your images, there's no point in using a different format. Uh, so JPEG would be just as fine for that and also for sharing images via email and that's specifically down to the size of the file itself. The next file format that I want to touch on is a TIFF format. Now this one is less commonly used in the photo community mainly because most of the publishers use it. It's not something that a photographer would use necessarily unless the image itself is designed to be printed in a magazine or a newspaper or something like that. Now, usually they are uncompressed files. They will uh, be an alternative to a higher quality image than the JPEG file. They will have a little bit more info, so you can edit TIFF files a little bit better than you would JPEG files, and they can be printed at a larger size without losing a lot of the quality. Um, so if you know it's for a publishing, so you want to send some images to a magazine or something like that, sending them the TIFF format might be a better option than sending them a JPEG format. Next up, we have RAW files. Now, a lot of photographers and a lot of people that are taking pictures out there are talking about the RAW format. The RAW format is the, let's call it, the purest form of an image that you can get. The idea with it is that it will have a lot more information about the image itself, about the details in the image, highlights, shadows, and all that and also it's the preferred file to use when you are going to edit your images. So if you are thinking of ed editing your images on a computer, on a, I don't know, editing software, Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, whatever you have, um, then shooting in a RAW format in the camera would give you an advantage of having more information about the image and it will allow you to end up with a better edited image. Now you need to keep in mind that the RAW format basically because it has more information about the image is going to be a slightly bigger file. That means you will have less space on your memory card and less space on your hard drives or computers or whatever you are saving them. So you need to keep that in mind. Unless you are thinking of editing your images, there's no need to use the RAW format. Compared to the JPEG, where the camera will apply some settings to the image that cannot be changed completely, with a RAW format you will have, as I said, the purest image file possible. So you can edit every single thing that you can, you can think of. 
So if you're a photographer, if you want to get into editing, make sure you go into your camera settings and tell the camera to save the files in a RAW format. Most of the DSLRs out there, or even compact cameras, mirrorless cameras, uh, they will have an option to save the files on your memory card as RAW and JPEG. Now, a lot of people get confused about why would they want both. Um, the idea is with the JPEG files, they are easier to analyze, let's say, before you start editing them. So in my case, for example, I always shoot RAW and JPEG. I save my files on my computer or an external hard drive and I have a quick look at the JPEG files and then when I decide which ones are the files that I would like to edit then I will import the raw files um, in Photoshop or Lightroom and I will start editing those ones. But JPEG is a very easy way to just have a look at all your images before jumping in the editing software. Keep in mind Having the two file formats saved on your memory card will take up a lot, a lot more space. So make sure you have big enough memory cards to do this. Next one is DNG, which stands for a digital negative file. Now, this is a format that was created by Adobe um, in order to provide a raw file standard for all camera manufacturers. You will probably have seen it in the news, online blogs, um, or even YouTube videos. When a new camera comes out, sometimes there is a little bit of a delay between the moment that Lightroom, for example, will understand and would be able to read those files properly. Um, now, because cameras and technology is changing so, so often nowadays, Having all your files either taken by a Canon or a Nikon or Panasonic, Olympus, whatever camera out there, um, converting their RAW files into a DNG file will assure you that you will be able to access those files later as well. As technology evolves, it can happen that in time, an older camera format, uh, like a RAW file from a very old Nikon camera, might not be read by Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, so having your files converted to DNG will basically assure you and give you the, the peace of mind that later you will be able to still open those images, to still view them in Photoshop or Lightroom and to be able to edit them. Then we have PNG. Again, a file format that probably you guys have heard about it <laughs> being talked. This is ideal to be used online. Um, so the images are compressed in a way that they don't lose any of the quality, any of the information in the image, but it will retain a small file size, which we know that is better for online. You don't want to have a website where you have huge files because that will make your website lo uh, load really, really slow. So if you're thinking of adding your images to a website or opening a uh, a website to showcase your work, uh, it would be better to save your files as a PNG format. Now, the quality of the image would still look absolutely fine on the website, but the website will not be overwhelmed with the file sizes. The other advantage of PNG is if you want to make a logo or if you want to edit your images and add overlays, PNG will allow you to have a transparent background. Um, I know some people will do a lot of like composites where you have one image and then on top of it you have something else like a fairy tale sort of scene. That can be done with a PNG file. The PNG file will allow you to, let's say, delete some parts of the image and have that transparent background that then can be overlaid on top of an actual image. Um, quality of the PNG files is not good for printing big sizes so make sure that if you have images on your website and then you have uploaded them in PNG you still have the JPEG format as well in case you want to print them or in case you want to sell your prints. Another format that is very popular online is GIF or GIF. <laughs> I'm always very confused about the right way to, to say it but um, GIF we all know what that is, is another format that is very popular. You have it on most of the messaging apps, you have it on Instagram, you have it on Facebook. The idea with it is that it is a smaller size uh, file as well, but you will have a maximum of 256 colors. 
So in terms of color accuracy, saving an image as a GIF is not the best way to go. Now, that being said, the most fun thing about the GIF <laughs> files is obviously that they can be animated, so it can make an image look quite fun. Next one up, we have BMP files. Now, these ones are, again, something that initially Microsoft created. Um, uh, luckily, nowadays, you can open BMP files on a Mac computer as well. And the idea with them is that the color is saved in each individual picture, a pixel, without any compression. This will basically provide you with a high quality image, high quality digital file, and is again ideally used in print but not on web as much. Um, so again, it's one of those things that most people that are working in publishing, magazines, newspaper, uh, are using because you have a lot more information about the colors and we all know that when it comes to printing you want to make sure that you have the correct information about colors otherwise you will end up with a picture that is not necessarily look the way that it should look like um, again it's not a very common used file especially if you're not working in print but that's an option as well that you will have when you're saving the file and the last format that I want to mention and touch on is PSD. Now, this one is a Photoshop file that will allow you to tune an image, adding multiple layers at once and modifying the image bit by bit. This is something that you would usually be able to do after you edited your image in Lightroom or Photoshop. Um, when you save it, it will have all the layers available and you would be able to go back and edit them as you wish. You have to keep in mind though that after you save the file, after you flatten the image, because Photoshop will give you the option to flatten the image and basically merge all the layers into one single one, um, there's no going back. So if you are working on an edit and you had multiple layers and then you want to save it as a JPEG file to edit it or to post it on Instagram or anything like that, make sure you have a copy saved in PSD as well because you never know in time you might want to go back to that file and you might want to change something. One important thing with PSD obviously because you have a lot of layers and a lot of information it basically stores all the information about your edited file is that they are very very large in size um, so make sure that you don't go overboard and save every single edit that you're doing in PSD just in case you might go back to it. Um, but yes, it's a great way to try and edit in a new style or try and do different things with your image, especially in Photoshop, having all the layers saved so that you would be able to go back into them and then alter them or edit them in any other way. In the end, there are a lot of file formats available out there and I know um, there are a couple more that you could potentially save your image as <laughs> when you are um, editing it or when you are putting it onto your computer. When it comes to photography specifically uh, and to the camera itself, you need to look at JPEG and at RAW files. Those are the most important ones. Those are the ones that the camera will offer you. The other ones are file formats that you can save the image after you have exported the files onto your computer. Think about what you want to do with your image when you are setting up your camera. If you have a camera that has some sort of interesting filters, if we look at the Fuji for example where they have the film simulation filters, shooting in JPEG so that you will allow the camera to input those settings in is probably advisable. Um, having obviously the RAW file will allow you to change the image in any way you would like afterwards but again when you start when you start when you start shooting when you start using a new camera you need to think would you like the camera to do the work for you or would you like to do the work after the camera took the image jpeg files they are a lot smaller they're great for instagram social media facebook stuff like that you don't need anything else um, if you don't edit your files again use jpeg you will have more space on your memory card so you'll be able to take more images if you know that you will edit your images or if you know that you want to try something new with your files make sure you use the raw format 
that will give you the most information about the image and it will save you in a couple of situations if you get your settings wrong or something like that the raw file will, will definitely come in handy I hope you guys found this video interesting I know to me I feel like it's information that is readily available out there but again because I had a couple of people actually messaging me and asking me about this file formats um, I thought hey you know maybe they would like to hear it from me instead of as I said, reading a, a blog or searching on YouTube from someone else. So I hope this video helps you. I hope it sheds a little bit more light in terms of file formats <laughs> that are available out there for images. And um, yeah, I hope uh, next time when you're taking your camera out for a spin, you're going to check the file format as well to make sure that you will get the right file for your needs. <laughs> Until next time.